Okay, hello everybody to our webinar today about health data science at the University of Birmingham. Uh, our names are George Kutos, who's in the background as well with me. <clears throat> and uh, my name is Andreas Kavert. Today we want to actually introduce the um, new and novel health data science master uh, program uh, here at the university. So the reason why we set up this course is basically there are numerous new challenges in uh, for healthcare providers in general in health, um, as we have seen um, just just recently actually. Um, uh, during the pandemic, and there has been an extraordinary transformation in the way how we actually make use of healthcare data. Healthcare data is like clinical data, GP data, um, and so forth. So how can we combine this kind of like immense amount of healthcare data and, and, and actually bring it to the patient? So uh, there's a real need for, for solutions which are not only expert driven, but really data driven. And uh, this course we have put together and we have run, um, I would say successfully uh, this year already, um, will address these challenges by a number of different, in a number of different ways. We will be, um, we will provide um, a specific training um, to, to connect, to understand what the data is uh, give you robust skills to put data together to analyze this kind of health data. Um, and we are trying to have that with the patient in mind. And I come a bit more detail about what kind of data we're talking about in a second. So the overall aim is really to give you as a as a student of this course, um, a real sense of what's out there and what could be done. Yeah. So basically um, being the catalyst for real new innovations and potential research opportunities, everything to do with healthcare data, with clinical data, with medical data. So as I said uh, before, we are trying to give you all the skills and this is a very diverse and, and, and very rich environment where we have people teaching and coming from uh, biochemistry, coming from biology partially, uh, but also very much like myself, coming from a mathematics and computer science background. And we want to teach you this in a kind of like open real world environment as much as we can, um, how to analyze uh, this kind of data uh, we talk about in a few seconds. So it's, it's really develop your, your skills uh, up your skills for data science in the 21st century in terms of health and healthcare and medical and clinical data. So the, the kind of like um, data which has been collected um, in the clinical settings or in the, in the primary care settings, i.e. GPs and secondary care setting uh, hospitals, has so far always been analyzed in in diverse silos you you either have uh, images taken from retina as you might see on the top here or you have um, omics information coming from genetic phenotyping you might have other images come from histograms you might have mris uh, and so forth you might also have um clinical letters like the summaries gp letters um and so forth and and every of these kind of like data is one dimension uh for us to speak and uh, what we have is a multitude of this data and one of the tasks is actually of this course to know all of this data bring it together and analyze it in some way or another so to do that we um, go and think about biomedical data, which is, as I just said, collected in various silos. And what we're trying to bring together in this uh, course is really um, addressing certain multimodal and high dimensional data and try to integrate that. So you might have information about ECGs um, of a patient uh, having heart failures or uh, MRIs from the heart, or you might actually the family history of this particular patient. But how can we actually integrate that? And how can we analyze that in a very intelligent manner? For that, obviously, we will use, um, after all this integration, uh, methods uh, known from machine learning and artificial intelligence. And once you have that in that kind of like data, you can make predictions and you can actually make it actionable. So the analytics is not only analytics for itself, but you can hopefully um, bring 
um, predictions, risk modeling to the patient and eventually come up with something which is which is like precision medicine, where you know what kind of phenotype a particular patient might be and better find a better treatment uh, for the particular patient. So what we usually talk about are these kind of patient specific phenotype profiles where we have different kinds of data. Um, we might have it over time. So we might have a temporal features across the entire lifetime um, of the patient's um, entity, but also in our setting, it will be a gradually increasing your capabilities of analyzing something like structured data. These are electronic health records or EHR records. Um, and in there, you might have something what we call semi-structured. That is, structured would be really demographics like age, gender, um, ethnicity, for example. Um, semi-structured data is more a bit loose, and it's probably one of the most resourceful uh, information we have is actually letters like uh, text which is somewhat in a structure but not directly accessible so we are trying to um, teach you as well how to extract information from clinic letters from text but not only but also we want to do it in unstructured data again unstructured the, the term is a bit vague uh, um, we might want to actually do that from ECGs, as you might see in here, or from images. How can we extract information from that and then use it for the benefit of the patient? And obviously, we have also um, um, omics data uh, partially for patients, and we want to uh, actually uh, analyze that. Now, these different types of data, they come in, in, in certain breadth and depth. So from structured information, let's say GP records, you have a very uh, a breadth of information about a lot of patients. So just, just think of it going to a GP, um, everybody more or less is recorded, uh, and this data can be collected. So you have a lot of high number of patients having structural information or going to a hospital the same way. Now, semi-structured data, everything which resides in some form of letters or clinical letters or clinical nodes, that becomes already less frequent. So you don't have the breadth anymore, but it's getting more specific. So you get deeper down into the depth. And similarly, the same is true for the unstructured data, where you only get an ECG if you have a cardiovascular um, issue or problem or suspected to have one. And similarly, for uh, histograms for any sorts of images are very specific. So you go and have more information to some extent, uh, the deeper down you go, or even go down to the omics uh, part of it, um, but the breadth of this information will be limited to somewhat extent so we're trying to explore this kind of data within the course going having this kind of like very wide breadth but also going into the depth and for that we we look basically a bit about the phenotype how does the disease actually manifest itself in a particular patient or in patients but also look into the genotype or the omics uh, part um, of this kind of data so this course was originally designed in collaboration um, or basically initiated with the health data research uk which is a government initiative here in the uk um, it started off um, with a number of core centers and we are part of the core center in the midlands and um, where the university of birmingham is leading this center the idea of health data research uk is exactly bring health data uh, together in an analyze analytical analyzable form and and basically improve the service the nhs and and other um uh medical facilities provide to the population so this was our driving force behind putting this kind of like msc together now a bit about the structure so we we thought about everything um, is centered around health data and and you might have as i already mentioned the secondary care information from hospitals you do have information from um, gp records you might have um, which is usually primary care data, you have um, trials, clinical trials, and so forth. So what do you need to actually analyze this kind of information? And this is basically how do you analyze this information? And we put this together in what we say how, data science and skills. 
And the main part are three um, modules which we have a look at. And the first one is um, computing practice in health data science that will cover, I come to that in a second, look into programming skills. Um, we assume, we don't assume that you have in-depth knowledge of programming skills. The aim here of these kind of, of this block of modules is to really teach you the required skills to be able to understand and to transfer data from one format to another to um, plot and visualize information. And that will lead out automatically to the essential of mathematics and statistics, where we will have a look into how can you analyze data um, using statistics, what does it mean to have a significant better outcome, and so forth. And the next part is where it goes a bit more interest, uh, where it goes to be a bit more interesting, is actually going into statistical machine learning, uh, to some expect a bit into AI, where we will have to, uh, where we look into the fundamental approaches, how you can learn from data itself. Then the next um, column pillar we are sitting on is basically health data and the expert, where we will have a look into what we call health data fundamentals. I come into that in a second. Um, you can collect data, but obviously it has to be followed a certain governance, certain ethics, GDPRs and so forth. So we will be looking into uh, patient consent, into ethics and governance, but also we'll have a look into how you can analyze very specific data, i.e. omics data, that will be covered in the health data fundamentals. And then we will integrate different kind of data together um, exactly doing what we, we showed initially, having um, clinical text, having images, how we can combine this information and omics data, combine this information and, for example, produce a risk modeling uh, um, a risk model. And overall, we also have the epidemiology. So um, how does can the patient benefit um, from this collected data? Um, and finally, the, the, the MSc will be uh, concluded with an individual research project. So where you choose your preferred subject area, uh, you will work for uh, roughly three months on it and write up a project and present it later on. So why would you consider Birmingham for health data science? Well, um, we have certain research excellence uh, in our side in the clinical as well as in the data science setting. So we have medical science excellence, we have NIHR um, uh, centers uh, with us. We also have very close ties and connections to the University Hospital NHS Trust here in Birmingham. So um, George and I, we are working very closely together with consultants from the trust. And actually, um, our our offices are in a shared building with the hospital. So we're going to see and we are seeing um, consultants, let's say, from cardiology uh, and so forth, more or less on a daily basis. Obviously, we also have health uh, science excellence. Um, as I mentioned, we are part of the Health Data uh, Research UK, uh, but also we have strong connections and uh, to the Alan Turing Institute, indeed, George is a uh, is a member of the Alan Turing Institute, uh, uh, Alan Turing Fellow, and we have other uh, strong connections to other centers and clusters. And obviously, because of our work, we also have um, partnerships with other organizations such as NHS Digital and uh, NHS X um, and Genomics England. Now, coming back to the structure um, of our um, master. It's basically structured into six taught modules. The first one is this foundation of computing practices in health data science that will teach you, as I mentioned before, everything you need to know about computing principles. And that goes from really um, how does a computer work inside, but this will be very briefly, but also how do you navigate around a computer? How do you navigate on, on file structures? And then what does a computer actually do? Uh, it sounds kind of very easy to, to answer that, but from a kind of like programming point of view, it's slightly different what you actually think it might be doing. And we will look into uh, programming languages in particular, uh, mainly Python at that part, but also a bit of R. Um, how can you actually make the computer really do what you want to do and visualize information? The second part 
um, the second module, should I rather say, is really concerned about the mathematical and statistical concepts you should know about, really how to look um, for significant differences in, for example, an outcome um, of a particular treatment. That will be module two. Module three, as I mentioned, is the machine learning or AI bit, um, where we look at the fundamental underlying algorithms um, for, for analyzing data. This is kind of like transferable, not only to health data, but what we see here, most of it is actually just um, the essence, the required skills to build up on any kind of data science module you can think of. And, but all we have here um, is basically something which is um, custom designed for health data science. Um, similarly, the health data fundamentals will be concerned with ethics and governance of clinical data and also the analytic principles of various omics um, data types. And, then we have the epidemiology and health informatics, where we look into the key concepts of larger populations of patients and uh, where you basically have the breadth um, of the data. You have a very long, uh, a lot of patient, potential patients you could analyze, but to a very uh, shallow uh, depth, so to speak. You have probably just visits for the GP. What can you do with that kind of information? And this is basically what has been used a lot in the last two years during the pandemic to make, um, uh, to basically analyze uh, the cost of COVID, um, how, how people react um, to certain um, vaccinations and so forth, but this is basically epidemiology and health informatics. And finally, the last taught module is bringing all this different kind of data um, silos together in this multimodal data analytics, where we look into advanced content, concepts of analyzing and integrating this data and making basically the different silos work for us. So we're really looking into multimodal health data sets. And finally, you have this interdisciplinary health data research project where we are trying to, to give you, um, it's, it's up to you a bit, but uh, really trying to, to give you the opportunity to put everything you have learned during this MSc into practice for a kind of like specific targeted research project. So how is the um, data, uh, the, the MSc delivered? Most of the time we have, I think all the time, we have block teaching, which is each module is delivered in a timeline between two and three weeks. It's usually a mixture of lectures, practicals and tutorials. So every module has a slightly different approach. Um, we used to do a lot like morning lectures, afternoon practicals. I personally prefer it intertwined, so we have uh, a bit of a lecture, like 20 minutes, half an hour, and then you can put your what you just heard into practice. So it sticks really in your mind. And then we switch back into lectures. It's a bit depending on each of the module. Um, so, but it will be uh, more or less a whole day if we have, we are on campus. There is also obviously some self-study required and some group work. So you will have group presentations, you will have individual presentations, you will have um, exams like in STUDS, for example, um, and you will be also required to write essays um, given for a specific topic. The modules start in the first semester. Um, I put that in here because we used to start slightly differently, but uh, the new um, type tabling works out like that we have the modules one and two and three in the first semester that accounts for 60 credits. And the second semester, we have the remaining taught modules for five and six, which is another 60 credits. And then you have these individual projects, which start basically after Easter. So you will have hopefully have chosen your uh, preferred topic uh, before the Easter break, and then you will dive into individual projects. So overall, why would you say we want to study this course? Well, we believe that we do offer a very unique yet diverse um, ecosystem um, in a very collaborative environment to actually learn every, everything you need to know about health data and health data science for making it work for um, you personally, uh, first of all, but also in an academic way, but also for the NHS and, and other institutions in the healthcare sector, but also for industry. So you will acquire skills, not 
particularly for health data science, but not only restricted to health data science. As I mentioned, the first three modules will be will be more or less core modules you will get in any data science course, but all the uh, all the um, focus will be obviously to each R systems, to uh, clinical systems, to clinical examples. You, um, which we hope you can relate based on your background to that, by the way. Um, and we hope that you really un uh, uh, gain and develop a real understanding about the healthcare systems in the UK and beyond, and also the ethics and governance, what you can actually do with the data and how do you access the data uh, if you basically start from scratch, what kind of data is, is really usable and what is not usable straight away, and where do you have to ask for permissions to actually analyze it. Uh, and overall, we hope that you uh, will go with us on this kind of journey and you will have the skills so you, we can we can revolution, revolutionize the, the utilization of healthcare data and health data overall, um, including all different modalities, uh, including images, including text, including omics, um, to build something together uh, for the patient. Well, I think I talked a lot. So what are the career options? So obviously, I mentioned that before, it will be for healthcare providers, um, like the NHS in various ways. Um, but it might also be for pharma, it might also be for local governments. Uh, it might also that you want to be uh, stay in academia and potentially pursue a PhD afterwards um, in that area. And it really goes beyond just healthcare, and it's really the basis for all sorts of um, data science uh, for other areas or related areas. So I did a quick check just before we met today and looked in health data jobs, and there are definitely some around. So I think the career options are really open, and uh, that has also been shown the last two years um, during the pandemic, the focus on how can we make use of all the data which is nowadays already electronically collected, how can we make use of that? So just a, a bit on, on the, the entry requirements. The entry requirements are uh, like an undergrad degree from 2.1 from biology, medicine, pharmacology, mathematics, computer science, or uh, other relevant subjects. So we're not strictly ruling out other subjects. Um, we have to see for each individual application how it actually fits to the course. So you might come from a different background, but you might be strongly interested in health data science and potentially have shown that in your CV already, or at least in your letter um, you sent to us, where you basically uh, write why you would like to study this course. So in the current um, course, we have um, one person who's really good and comes from economics. So he's more interested in health economics, what, um, and, and that is super interesting, fascinating. In terms of facilities, we do have uh, computing facilities on campus. We have a large um, high performance cluster um, situated here on campus. So you don't need compute power on your own. We can actually tap into the system there. So we it, it's a good idea to have a laptop yourself. It's not required though. So everything we do in terms of computing right in the uh, lectures, tutorials and practicals, we will have access to other PCs and then we log on to this HPC cluster. However, it's quite a good idea to, uh, idea to have a kind of like slightly decent laptop so you can actually log into the system in the first place. But this is up to you. As I mentioned before, the assessments vary between different modules. Um, you will have presentations, uh, you have essays, or sometimes the, or a synopsis, or sometimes an exam. And the dissertations, as I mentioned before, they will be self-selected, so you won't be told you have to do a certain uh, dissertation. Um, we try to find something which suits you and interest us. And this is always depending on staff availability, um, who's already looking after students and who's not. Uh, but we try to cater for all possibilities. Um, it's in principle also possible to, if you have already connections to 
uh, other organizations that we can even think of having a thesis together with other organizations. But this is a bit trickier because we always have to ensure that the data is available and, and um, all the kind of like uh, constraints get a tick off and, and we can continue. So if you have any questions, you uh, can either contact George, which uh, you can see the email there, or just ask him directly now, or me. Um, George is the chair of clinical bioinformatics, um, and uh, as I said, the Alan Turing uh, fellow, and I'm uh, associate professor in, health, uh, professor in health data science, or we have our admin administrative support, which is Ruby side, which you usually reach under the health data science at contacts.bham.ac.uk. And uh, if you have any questions, you could come in a second. I just saw something that I actually have uh, mixed my slides up and that should have come before. Overall, we have the PG third, PG dip and MSC. So the PG third is modules one to three, PG dip um is the modules one to four and the msc is the full modules taught modules one to six plus this interdisciplinary health data research project um, we can offer that course also in part-time um, but that will be um, we will have to think about that depending on your requirements right um, i think that's it if there are any questions please ask now